fat burning trends. Ah, another day, another health trend. It's something all of us come across while on our phones. And if you're on a weight loss journey, chances are you probably wondered if any of these trends really work. From powdered greens in the morning to the fat burning coffee you should drink, we're going to discuss it all today. And I'm gonna mention a new fun compound that you should be making in your intestines from drinking olive oil, O-E-A. Find out which of these you can safely incorporate into your life and which you should kick to the curb. Liquid chlorophyll. When this trend went viral, it flew off the shelves as viral videos claim that just a few drops of this in your water in the morning can drastically improve digestion, reduce inflammation and bloating, and rid the body of odor. Well, does it really work? In fact, chlorophyll has some very interesting compounds that can, in fact, uh, fight fatigue, can actually maybe improve your gut microbiome health, but it's easy to get chlorophyll by eating plants. Leafy green plants are loaded with chlorophyll. The other easy way to get chlorophyll is to eat algae or algae tablets like spirulina, like chlorella. And these ways are far better for you than buying up all the liquid chlorophyll in the stores. There's a compound in these plants called chlorophyll that has been shown in studies to aid weight loss. So yeah, find yourself some chlorophyll, but don't obsess about where the source is. Eat your greens. If you eat green, you'll become lean. Coffee in the morning. Now there's two trends right now that involve coffee. One is profi, protein in coffee. Mixing cold brew coffee with a protein shake to increase satiety throughout the day and thus lose weight. And lemon coffee, one cup of hot coffee in the morning with a squeeze of lemon juice that can burn fat instantly. Well, it all depends. There is so many new exciting ways to make coffee the in thing I can't see straight. From my good friend Dave Asprey's bulletproof coffee trend with MCT oil and yak butter, uh, try finding yak butter, but to all of these new coffee trends. Let's set the record straight. Coffee contains caffeine, and polyphenols. And if you've read Unlocking the Keto Code, you know that both of those compounds uncouple your mitochondria. And if you uncouple your mitochondria and do it consistently, you will burn more fat, you will burn more energy, and you will lose weight. So coffee in itself has all the things you need to promote weight loss by uncoupling mitochondria. Now you can add things to your coffee that can additionally uncouple mitochondria. Protein is not one of them. Protein does not uncouple mitochondria. But if you're looking for something to add to your diet following a workout, then there's absolutely nothing wrong with putting a scoop of protein powder in your coffee. But buyer beware. Remember our ancestors only acquired protein by eating it whole. They either ate meat or they ate fish or they ate uh, chicken or they ate eggs or they ate plants that were loaded with protein. And that protein had to be slowly broken down from whatever you were eating it. And that protein entered our bloodstream very, very, very slowly. That's completely different than a protein powder that has been broken down into basically individual amino acids that are then instantly absorbed 
And that's a hit of amino acids that will actually be converted to sugar rather than stored as protein. So with protein powders in general, buyer beware. Same with, with lemon. Now, lemon water is a, is a fun trend. Lemon coffee is a fun trend. Supposedly it alkalizes you and coffee is an acid so that lemon will alkalize the coffee. Folks, the idea that adding any alkaline food into your diet to help you alkalize your body is quite frankly poppycock. The amount of any alkaline product in lemon water, for instance, is infinitesimal in terms of the amount of buffering you would need to change your basic pH. So if you like the taste of these things, by all means do it. But I'd rather you do what the Italians do. And that is they take a piece of lemon peel and squeeze it into their coffee. Now, why do they do that? The lemon peel contains a really unique polyphenol called D-limonene. And D-limonene is actually one of the best agents for increasing phase one and phase two detoxification enzymes in your liver. That's why the Italians don't put lemon juice in their coffee, but they squeeze a lemon peel into their coffee to get actually a health benefit from the lemon peel. Or use an orange peel, it has the same substance. Colonic cleanses. If people really knew where the idea of colonic cleanses came from, they would absolutely think twice. At the turn of the previous century, there was a, a very large movement called the auto intoxication uh, movement, where the belief was that diseases were caused by bacteria in our gut and in our mouth leaking through the wall of our gut and causing disease. Now, in a way, they were absolutely right, but the treatment was the wrong approach. So colonics were developed to rid the body of the harmful bacteria that were living in the gut. And quite frankly, colonics were very effective at doing that. Plus, colonics got rid of four to five pounds of bacteria in your gut and you lost weight. So colonics became incredibly popular to get rid of all these harmful bacteria. In fact, the trend became so crazy that in the 1930s and 40s, people would have their entire colons removed and all their teeth pulled to eliminate any sources of these bacteria. And people paid money to have this done. So, What's really going on is you're actually getting rid of probably the most important four to five pounds in your body of your gut microbiome every time you have a colonic. So that's the last thing you want to do for good health. But what we want to do and what our program does is give you good bacteria in your gut rather than the bad bacteria that we've been feeding for all these years. So that's why don't get a colonic cleanse. Just change the bacteria in your gut. And if you've read The Plant Paradox, you know that just three days of a properly constructed diet, the Plant Paradox diet, you will change your gut bacteria from a set of bad guys to a set of good guys. And all it takes is three days. So it's a whole lot better for your long-term health than flushing all your bacteria down the toilet. Uh, don't do that. That's been something that should have stopped a long time ago. Powdered greens. Now people are adding a scoop of powdered greens to their water every morning to help reduce bloating and burn fat. Now, most of these products include probiotics and a super greens blend. 
And I have nothing against most of these products, but buyer beware. Almost all of these green products, including several really popular ones, have wheatgrass powder or barley grass powder. And wheatgrass and barley grass contain gluten. So if you're on a gluten-free health kick and you want to eliminate all sources of gluten from your diet, those powdered green drink mixes are one of the worst things that you can do. And I can't tell you the number of, of my well-meaning patients who think they're eating gluten-free but are having a green drink every morning and are not getting better and still have reaction to gluten on our blood tests, it's their green drink that was the final straw that broke the camel's back. So read the label. There are green drinks available that don't have these nasty compounds. The other thing that we all forget is it is better to eat your foods whole rather than just the products. So if you want to get greens in your diet, have yourself a big green salad, have yourself a bunch of green vegetables. You will eat the whole foods that will feed your gut buddies as well. Always, we come back to, sure, there are great compounds in plants, but we should have learned from our great grandparents or our great great grandparents to eat these foods whole because you not only feed yourself, but more importantly, you feed your gut microbiome, what they need. And remember, if you want to put any of these tips that I've mentioned into practice, check in with your doctor first. Finally, I'll mention one other exciting new development. There are compounds in olive oil that are converted into your, in your gut by your gut microbiome into compounds that suppress your appetite. And that compound is oleoethylenolamide. Now, that's a mouthful. It's abbreviated OEA. And OEA comes from your bacteria breaking down oleic acid, which is in olive oil, it's also in macadamia nut oil, into this compound that literally goes to your brain and tells you you're not hungry. And so, interestingly enough, if you look at people who use a liter of olive oil per week in their diet, and there are multiple long-lived people that use a liter of olive oil in their diet, they're skinny. And we now know that one of the reasons is that you convert that olive oil into OEA, and that tells your brain that you're not hungry. Once again, if you want a healthy weight loss trend, it's olive oil, folks. Get it in your diet. You'll actually suppress your hunger by this really cool new mechanism that's just been recently discovered. I think you're going to love this next one. In fact, many of us believe that the ravages of what we view as aging is actually accumulated mitochondrial damage. 